I'm Jeff. My wife and I host Message of Hope. Message of Hope wants to be your weekly inspirational, motivational, and non-judgmental friend to help you through your week as we share Bible truth and life experiences to let you know you're not alone. Let's join Sandra to see what Message of Hope she has today. Hey guys, today I want to share with you about my weekend and how very blessed I feel, in hindsight that is, to have had learning and growing pains along with my own prodigal son. I hope by sharing this with you that it will help you to see light at the end of the dark tunnel you may currently be in with your own child, friend, or significant other, and you will see how God alone can mend your brokenness and give you and them hope for a bright future. God is a God of restoration, and He will give new life as a new creation in Him as we rely and trust Him and stand on His Word. Just to give you a little backstory, my son was always a good person, has always had a big heart. He would do anything for his family and friends to help them, and has always been a hard worker. At about 15 years old, though, my son got to running with the wrong crowd and experimenting with drugs, and in a gradual downward spiral, we watched as more and more of his life was overtaken with pills. At age 32, he was in prison. If you're in the midst of a similar situation, you know drugs are notorious for taking the addicted one's focus from everything that means anything in their life. It quickly becomes a me, 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 and my drugs, drugs, drugs so much that nothing else can be seen, heard, or even felt. It's all-consuming to the point nothing else matters. During those years, we were lied to, betrayed, had lots of stuff stolen from us. So a dark cloud hovered over our every day and interrupted any sleep we sought at night and at times caused friction in our own marriage because of my denial to the truth and not wanting to face what was really going on. It got to the point we had to cast our son from our home and our daily life, as all trust had vanished, and in an effort to promote some change of behavior in his life. Of course, as a mother, this brought no peace to my heart, but yet again continued me worrying for his life, as this forced him to live in his car because he was homeless, jobless, and moneyless, with an addiction that screamed to be fed daily. Drugs took his marriage, caused separation from his children, his family, and ultimately caused him to spend years in prison contemplating life and the choices that had landed him there. However, with God, all things are possible, and our son found God in prison. It sounds weird, But in his daily prison life, he found true freedom from his prison of drug addiction. And God took this opportunity to shed light and hope into his life and set him on a new course, one of living the rest of his life with the purpose of ministering to other men who found themselves in the same situation. And he spent all his time behind bars leaning on and learning of God and preparing for his future with him in order to do what he has been called to do for God's glory. He wrote numerous many teachings, several poems and prayers. He wrote two books while he was in prison, which are currently being edited and will be a support for men who are incarcerated. While he was there, he polled the men around him and how they responded to those who were coming in to minister to them so that he could learn what works and doesn't work in conveying your message so that it's understood and accepted so that when he is ultimately working with them in the future, he can minister more effectively. He has a job and works daily and is a mentor to men within the ministry that he's now working heavily in. That brings us to today. You see, my son has a little time off from his work, and he has taken the opportunity to come home for a visit, as we've had no real time together, nor has he been in our home for years. 
other than about an hour and a half the day he got out, but he had other commitments, so there was no time to really talk, and the house was full of people who were greeting him, and then he had to leave, so this is really the first time we've had any time to talk in years. His incarceration had took him many miles from home, and that prevented us any visits during that time. So today, we are both so excited to welcome our son, this new man, into our home again. So, this morning, my husband sent me a text, and it said, when is Matt to arrive? And I said, he's on his way. And then it said, are you preparing the fattened calf? Well, that made me cry. My son is an example of the story given in Luke 15 in the Bible of the prodigal son, and I'd like to share it with you now. It's from Luke 15, 11 through 31. And Jesus told them a story. Once a man had two sons. The younger son said to his father, Give me my share of the property. So the father divided his property between his two sons. Not long after that, the younger son packed up everything he owned and left for a foreign country, where he wasted all of his money in wild living. He had spent everything when a bad famine spread throughout the whole land, and soon he had nothing to eat. He went to work for a man in that country, and the man sent him out to take care of his pigs. He would have been glad to eat what the pigs were eating, but no one gave him a thing. But let me interject here. The Bible tells us that pigs are not fit to eat in Deuteronomy, in Leviticus, and a Jewish man would have felt terribly insulted if he had to feed pigs, much less eat with them. Actually, even touching them would have been offensive to him. But to carry on, finally he came to his senses and said, My father's workers have plenty to eat, and here I am starving to death. I will go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against God in heaven and against you. I am no longer good enough to be called your son. Treat me like one of your workers. The younger son got up and started back to his father. But when he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt sorry for him. He ran to his son and hugged and kissed him. The son said, Father, I have sinned against God in heaven and against you. I am no longer good enough to be called your son. But his father said to the servants, Hurry and bring the best clothes and put them on him. Give him a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. Now let me interject here. A ring and sandals show that the young man's father fully accepted him as his son. A ring was a sign of high position in the family. And sandals showed that he was a son instead of a slave since slaves did not usually wear sandals. But the father goes on to say, Get the best calf and prepare it, so we can eat and celebrate. This son of mine was dead, but is now come back to life. He was lost and has now been found. And they began to celebrate. The older son had been out in the field, but when he came near the house, he heard the music and the dancing. So he called one of the servants over and asked, What's going on here? The servant answered, Your brother has come home safe and sound, and your father ordered us to kill the best calf. The older brother got so angry that he would not even go into the house. His father came out and begged him to go in. But he said to his father, For years I have worked for you like a slave, and I have always obeyed you. But you have never even given me a little goat so that I could give a dinner for my friends. This other son of yours wasted your money on prostitutes. And now that he has come home, you ordered the best calf to be killed for a feast. His father replied, My son, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we should be glad and celebrate. Your brother was dead, but now he is alive. He was lost, but now he has been found. Wow, that's powerful. So while it might sound strange, I thank God for my son's imprisonment. I thank God for his life. I thank God for changing him from the inside out, for the softening of his heart for putting a love only God can provide and a change only God can impart. 
And in the end, as a mother, it was worth all the hell. It was worth all the pain. It was worth all the tears to have the man in front of me that I will soon have today. Because with God, he is now a new creation. God has made him over from the inside out. My son's heart is a heart for people and a love for people. And God has instilled an urgency in him to minister to others for their life before it's too late for them. We are confident he will spend the rest of his life sharing the love, forgiveness, and restoration that only a life with God the Father can give, as he gives back some of what has been given to him by our good Father. We also believe God will restore his relationship with his children as he has restored our relationship with one of ours today. And today, as he arrives, We will be as the father who prepared a celebration for his son, who had gone astray, but now has come home. I want to add the best I can, because I fail to find the words, to express the deep gratitude that we feel towards a special ministry in Princeton called HR Ministry. As without them and their love and their selflessness and faithfulness, In reaching out to men in prison, I might not be sharing this story today. We might not have had a son coming home today. We would certainly not be seeing the one we will see today because we owe so much of this story to them. And we can't thank them enough for the love and the opportunities that they are giving to help people out of the pig's pen and back into the graces of their Heavenly Father. So instead of fancy words, I will simply have to say, thank you, HR Ministry, from the bottom of our hearts. Because of your team and those in your community, because of First Baptist Church, we are blessed beyond measure and truly can feel the excitement and the overwhelming emotions that the Father must have felt in the story shared by Jesus in Luke. Because my son is on his way home, and I am preparing the fattened calf, a big old roast, and we will receive him with gladness and so much praise for God our Father, who is the ultimate one we thank for allowing this today. And as a symbol of this freedom, we will read the Luke story with our son before our meal today, and as a memorial, we will sound the shofar before we partake as a symbolism of the walls that have fallen that used to surround my son. We hope this podcast will help you to lay down your fears and pick up the encouragement, the hope, the true and everlasting life that is found in only following the Master. Continue in your prayers and stand on God's Word until... I ask if you enjoy our podcast that you like and or share to help us to be able to remain online and continue making a difference in people's lives through God's holy word. Check out our blog at msgofhope.com as there we share the podcast notes and a blog on a variety of subjects that you may find of interest. And lastly, if you are looking for a place to donate your time, your talents, or your money, I would suggest you consider going to www.fbcprinceton.com to see all the outreaches they have and consider donating there. Before I finish this episode, I would like to share with those who may not know what a shofar is. A shofar is a ram's horn and is used as an instrument of spiritual warfare. For instance, the Torah says in Numbers 10.9, If you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you, then you shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and you will be remembered before the Lord your God, and you will be saved from your enemies. You know, the shofar also brings to mind the ram that is caught in the thicket by its horns, which Abraham ended up sacrificing in place of his son Isaac, found in Genesis 22, 13. 
But for us as believers in Yeshua, the blast of the shofar represents the shout of God's victory over the power of sin and death. So today, I'm going to pray a prayer over you that was given to the sons of Aaron, saying this is how you are to bless the people of Israel. It's found in number six. And as I finish the prayer, you're going to hear the shofar blast for my son and the walls of addiction that surrounded him that have now fallen down because of our God. And as you listen, we pray the walls of your own or your loved ones fall as you pray over them in their life, as you remember with God, all things are possible. Let's pray. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Until next week, Shalom.